Very good. Thank you, Alex. Thank you all for your uh, support. My pleasure to open this webinar. Welcome to all of you, uh, wherever you are uh, in the world. It may be the morning or the afternoon or even the evening. We have over 200 participants registered. A few more will be joining uh, in the course of the hour. Um, very happy to welcome this uh, participants in the webinar. My name is Aziza Akmush. I'm uh, heading the division at the OECD that deals with cities, urban policies and sustainable development, uh, where this work on the circular economy in cities and regions is uh, uh, located. And it's uh, really a pleasure to have uh, you all online for this uh, first webinar on circular economy in cities and regions, which uh, due to the uh, unprecedented times we are facing uh, in our respective countries with COVID-19 is uh, being held online. Um, I would say as a, a, a teaser to the next uh, roundtable on, on, on circular economy in cities and regions, which uh, was meant to take place today in Oslo. And I would really like to thank our uh, colleagues from the uh, city of Oslo and from Nordic Innovation for the great efforts to uh, uh, prepare uh, this event, which uh, unfortunately, uh, as I was saying, due to the uh, special circumstances, uh, has to be postponed to, we hope, the fall. So this is not a substitute to the roundtable, but um, this is uh, definitely a, a webinar to keep the conversation going uh, until we, we have the opportunity to uh, meet physically uh, in Oslo by, by the end of this year. Um, the objective of uh, this morning's uh, session is uh, uh, to share with you some of the concrete examples and lessons that have come out of a series of policy dialogues that the OECD team, uh, Oriana, Luis, Ander, that many of you uh, have been uh, uh, interacting with, has been uh, carried out, uh, carrying out over the past uh, year and a half. Uh, we have today uh, on the table uh, three reports that were we're going to launch in the first part of this uh, webinar um, and we'll uh, have the opportunity to hear from a few more cities uh, in the second part of the webinar. Uh, we have done some test checks with many of you uh, and I, I hope the sound uh, is going well. Um, as uh, said earlier, we expect the 200 plus participants to uh, be active via the chat. Uh, very important for us that uh, you raise questions uh, throughout uh, the presentation so that we can combine them. We'll have three different moments during the webinar where we will open the floor for uh, interactions with uh, the participants. So it's very important. We have an OECD colleague who is currently monitoring the chat that you raise questions as you uh, see fit uh, so that we can make the selection downstream. Um, by default, you are all put on mute. Uh, we will unmute the, the speakers when uh, time uh, comes from them to uh, take the floor. Uh, the video recording of this webinar will be made available um, after uh, the session and uh, just for everybody to know that we have a second webinar this afternoon uh, that will start at 2.30 uh, Central European time and that will uh, zoom specifically on uh, issues of uh, measurement and uh, monitoring of circular economy. Um, maybe a few words uh, as an introduction and then I'll, I'll be uh, introducing uh, our uh, guest speakers uh, for the webinar. Um, just to say that the uh, paradigm shift uh, towards the circular economy um, will be all the more uh, relevant after uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, when cities and regions actually will be urged to reconsider the link uh, between environment and health, uh, to reflect on the dematerialization of the economy and society, uh, and on circular resources loops in response to this uh, hyper-globalization of the recent years. And, and I hope that this program uh, at the OECD will um, catalyze further opportunities, evidence, recommendations to make the circular economy part of the solution uh, towards healthier, less resource wasteful and environmental aware um, societies. So 
It's really my uh, pleasure to uh, give you a bit of background on these three case studies that we uh, are uh, launching today after um, a year and a half uh, policy dialogue with hundreds and hundreds of stakeholders in each of these cities um, and to uh, introduce uh, the speakers that will uh, share their takeaways, not only from the uh, invisible part of the iceberg, which is really uh, the consensus building exercise that has happened in each of these cities uh, to define this roadmap for uh, their respective uh, circular economy strategies, but also the recommendations that have come out of it and that are now in the hands of, of these decision makers to um, make happen uh, in practice. Um, we have a first case uh, that uh, relates to Groningen uh, in the Netherlands, a second case that relates to Umea in Sweden, and a case that relates to Valladolid in Spain. Those uh, three cities in the clustering that we have made on circular economy at the OECD are considered somehow newcomers. Newcomers because they are basically in the exploratory phase of setting up the needed economic and governance conditions to transition uh, from a linear to a uh, circular economy. Uh, for each of these cities, there has been a lot of uh, uh, dialogue, uh, consensus building, as I was saying, but also evidence-based analysis to support uh, the development of circular economy strategies that can see circular economy basically as an opportunity for growth, for jobs creations and for environmental uh, sustainability. So it's very um, uh, a, a great pleasure for me to introduce the first case, uh, Groningen, where uh, a circular economy ecosystem uh, can be created. Uh, we have seen throughout the dialogue that the city set up the goal of becoming energy and CO2 neutral by 2035, but also waste neutral by 2030. Um, in 2018, the city council developed what they called a a circular vision that basically identified three strategic areas, public procurement, waste management and knowledge as critical uh, enablers to this transition uh, towards circular economy. Uh, the peculiarity of Groningen is also to have a vice mayor with specific uh, responsibilities uh, regarding the circular economy uh, that recently uh, took office and that helps embody basically this uh, uh, political leadership that is needed for this transition to happen. Uh, what we've seen in this dialogue is that the circular economy in the case of uh, Groningen in the Netherlands can boost uh, thanks to an ecosystem where uh, business, citizens, universities and governments uh, can collaborate and uh, uh, we, we usually hear uh, this new Silicon Valley uh, nickname basically for uh, Groningen in the, in the Netherlands uh, where we have quite a, a, an interesting health and, and digital um, ecosystem uh, already in place. So it's really my pleasure to uh, now uh, welcome our uh, first guest speaker, uh, Mrs. Uh, Janet. Agren, Deputy Mayor of the city of Umea, to share with us uh, some of the takeaways from this dialogue and uh, uh, the vision uh, that she has uh, basically uh, put in motion to transition to the circular economy. Janet, thank you very much for your time and you have the floor. So maybe we need to unmute Jeanette. Hello. Yes, very good. Please go ahead. Thank you very much uh, for the word and thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of this seminar today. And I must agree with you, it's a challenging times uh, that we're now facing with the COVID-19 virus and it affects our entire society. But I want to start by thanking the OECD team for all the excellent work you have done for us uh, during last year for our city. Uh, as mentioned, we joined the OECD program on the circular economy and citizen regions in 2018. And the study has really exceeded our expectations by far. We wanted to develop a vision for the circular economy transition and learn from existing best practices 
and also to get the experience and the expertise from the OECD. Uh, and we're very happy uh, for your help. Uh, we have a vision of uh, 200,000 inhabitants by 2050, uh, but we are an average uh, city in Europe when it comes to size. Uh, but we do believe that the uh, solutions uh, that might work well for us uh, also can work well for other European cities. Uh, at the moment, we are about 130,000 uh, citizens, uh, so we are uh, growing, uh, and this means that we have uh, great possibilities, uh, but it also means that we are having some major challenges uh, ahead of us. Uh, the City Council therefore has decided that our growth must be reached in a sustainable way uh, and in all its uh, dimensions. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So we are a strong believer uh, of strategic networks uh, and collaborations uh, in our city, uh, regardless of it, it being on a local, regional, national or international level. Uh, so benchmarking is uh, an important tool for us and uh, the OECD study has been uh, a great uh, opportunity for us to learn more and to be compared by the best in this field. And we also feel uh, that the OECD has uh, really given us the guidelines we need to become better because we need to accelerate uh, the transition to a circular economy and collaborate with our industries, businesses, uh, NGOs and academia, academia to make it happen. And we also know that we need to cut our climate emissions rapidly to reach the Paris Agreement. And we have set a target in our new climate objectives uh, of uh, being climate neutral by 2040 at the latest. Uh, so we, we need to close the loops uh, to reach this target. Uh, and circular economy is a crucial tool for us uh, reaching our goals. Uh, next slide, please. And next. next slide, please. And next. Can I have the next slide, please? Yes. Ah, thank you. Uh, and in order to succeed with the transition and uh, create the legitimacy for change, uh, we believe we need to integrate our current work with uh, social sustainability, with our work with climate action and the circular economy. And in this study, over 120 stakeholders join the work and from the municipality we're trying to support citizens uh, so to take action and create solutions for a circular uh, city and a sustainable city and some of our larger, larger companies are already working for uh, sustainable production and they see great benefits uh, with a joint collaboration with the municipality for a circular economy. We also have SMIs uh, that are interested in the sharing economy and uh, with a coordinated circular economy approach, they can play a key role in the transition. Uh, and our business incubators are supporting green, sustainable and circular ideas. And this will hopefully foster new entrepreneurs to enhance the transition. But of course, now with the COVID-19 crisis, uh, the national government are investing a lot of funds in order to save our businesses. And we're also trying to do what we can from a local perspective. Uh, and this crisis is taking most of our focus right now. Uh, but uh, as I said, the City Council has decided on new environmental and climate uh, objectives and a new waste management strategy is on its way. And this will uh, hopefully support the transition to a circular economy. And the municipality is also going to analyze uh, our existing policies to see if they can be strengthened or if a new set of policies is needed for us to push the circular economy further. So we are fortunate in Umu to be a logistic hub uh, since we have transport routes both in the north-south direction and west-east. And this makes uh, scale handling good from our surroundings and we have a good position for our industry and business to have their main activities in our municipality. So another important area, uh, area besides transport uh, is our local food system. So now the municipality together with Region of Westerbottom, uh, that's our county, 
uh, we are trying to support the development uh, and trying to increase the amount of locally produced food in the public sector. And food, food waste uh, in the municipality is collected and sent away, away to uh, bio, biogas refinery. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So uh, I want to say that we are very grateful for all the recommendations uh, that we have been provided uh, uh, by the OECD, uh, and this is what we needed. And we are already uh, going forward with some of the recommendations. And to give a few examples, we're now setting up a coordinating function at our business development department. And this will hopefully enable the municipality to work with other state stakeholders and really set the agenda now for circular economy in Union. Yeah. And of course, one of the first tasks for this coordinated function will be to prioritize uh, from the recommendations uh, from, from, from the OECD. Uh, we're also looking for the possibility to start mapping out existing initiatives in our region. And this is one of the recommendations. And uh, UMI University uh, is also starting to look at the possibilities to perform a metabolism analysis, analysis in our region. And that will be a great help for uh, the municipality and the city. Uh, and we're already on our way of uh, strengthening our public procurement uh, in the municipality uh, to support the southern transition. So we are testing different ways of doing it. And if it's successful, we will scale it up. And another thing is that we will try to promote and foster a circular economy culture and working closer with business academia as well as organizations of the civil society. So I, I would like to end, uh, uh, but uh, before that, just yes, to say that it is uh, uh, a severe time of uncertainty right now, uh, but it is my hope that we, after this crisis, can continue our work and see this as an opportunity to go forward uh, with circularity and uh, not to go back uh, to business as usual. And once again, I want to thank the OECD for all the help uh, and the time you have given us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Janet. And as everybody could see, uh, this was uh, uh, Janet Agren, deputy mayor of the city of Umea, although I gave the introduction of the case of uh, Groningen, which I won't have to uh, repeat when our uh, third speaker comes in. Thank you very much for reminding us the objectives uh, to become uh, a leader in the circular economy by uh, 2028 and uh, carbon neutral by 2040. I think uh, the points you've made about being uh, the fastest growing urban center uh, in the north of, of Sweden and uh, and the related increasing demand for infrastructure, not only housing stocks, schools, roads, and green areas, but also for natural resources are uh, really making the circular economy principles very relevant for managing resources in, in your cities. Thank you for uh, flagging the initiatives and for showing the need to create uh, synergies across the different projects and initiatives that are making and, and striving to make Umea a green, smart and, and sustainable city uh, and for your uh, high level uh, commitment uh, to the policy dialogue. Uh, very proud to have the report of Umea on the table today. Um, thank you again, Deputy Mayor. And if you have questions for the uh, Deputy Mayor uh, of the city of Umea, please raise them via the chat. Uh, we are monitoring the questions and we'll open the floor uh, for discussion after uh, or two next speakers. It's now my pleasure to welcome uh, Rosa Huertas Gonzalez. Rosa, you're the director of the Innovation, Economic Development, Employment and Commerce Department of the city of Valladolid. Valladolid is one of the uh, three cities that uh, we have been uh, working closely with and that we have uh, completed in terms of the policy dialogue. You have this clear objective to make the city more attractive, innovative and competitive through the circular economy. Um, you have a number of challenges that you've been flagging throughout the dialogue, the shrinking and aging population, the significant employment um, that have made basically you prioritize the circular economy to create jobs and, and stimulate innovation. Um, we were very interested by the different uh, two calls for projects that you have issued in Valladolid. We found them a very innovative way to catalyze initiatives in a bottom-up fashion to stimulate local 
local business entrepreneurship. Uh, over 1 million euros was actually allocated to these uh, projects and I'm sure you'll take us through a number of very concrete initiatives related to um, the new business models, the eco design, the certification and, and so on uh, that you have been um, driving in this transition towards the circular economy. So Rosa, you have the floor please to introduce the findings from the Valladolid case that we are launching today. Uh, hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, yes, good morning, everybody. On behalf of the city of Valladolid, I want to thank the organizers for counting on us to present our approach to circular economy and also to share with us this amazing experience working uh, with the OECD team. And it's, it's really, really important for us uh, today uh, to show us or the result of this uh, amazing process. Uh, so, uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to give you an overview of the framework of circular economy in Spain. And the Spanish strategy for circular economy hasn't been approved yet, but the public consultation is already done. The same happens with the regional strategy, but uh, some Spanish cities felt something had to be Move forward to three years ago, so they decided to sign the Seville Declaration to support circular economy and do not wait for higher levels of government to take a lead. This declaration was made under the this cooperation, coherence, and scaling up. I think there is a school room for improving the levels in which stakeholders can cooperate. Uh, for example, in Valladolid, there is not really a, a strong cooperation across public, uh, private and academic actors. So this coordination is crucial and also across different levels of government. Policy coherence is also needed. needed uh, coherence across different policies, coherence across existing policies and plans, and coherence uh, across different projects, current and future ones. And the issue of scale up is key for the circular economy to take place and to move from experimentation to business. Because some of the projects have been carried out at the neighborhood or individual scales and now need to be scaled up. And this can be done, I think, in the metropolitan area. And so we are going to achieve better impacts in all terms, social, economic, and environmental. Uh, Next slide, please. Uh, next one. <laughs> yes, these are the tags. And then now the next one. Next. Next one. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, yes, thank you. But uh, now we are reading for action. So as a valuable as outcome of this participation in the OCD program, we got 19 recommendations developed in an action plan. And you can see the recommendations here. In bold or underlined, you can see those that we think are the more important to be or can be implemented in with impact in a short time. In order to promote the we are urban metabolism analysis to help identify priorities. After starting easy and small, as we did, now it's time to create a circular economy strategy with an overall vision with clear objectives and measurable targets while taking into account possible opportunities for job creation. It is important to promote this circular vision by leading by example. So when the circular economy is profitable in our aspect, 
And we are already working on race awareness using some successful business cases because we think that uh, it's easier to believe if you see. And the municipality also can facilitate collaboration with and cooperation with many actors. So we have to coordinate the local roadmap with other two other strategies at regional and national level. Of course, we have to enhance the collaboration with universities and companies. We are preparing now some regulations to facilitate the use of the city as a testbed for uh, circular products and services. And of course, we have to strengthen the change of experiences with other cities, not only, not only in Spain and Europe, but also now we are contacting some cities in Central and South America to work on this field. And of course, making the circular economy is also to be an enabler. So the fiscal question is not easy for us because of the limited competence that Spanish municipalities has regarding, have regarding this. But we can play an important role through public procurement because we are big buyers and big investors. We are already doing this. And also, we want to upgrade the role of the Agency of Innovation and Economic Development as a key actor for circular economy. Uh, so uh, we still have a very long and <clears throat> hard work ahead, particularly in this time of COVID-19 crisis. But this crisis is showing us that we can make changes overnight and that, that humans are resilient and entrepreneurial. So the change from linear to circular economy seems today more necessary and possible than ever. But this is a learning by doing process. So events such as this are, are a great opportunity to learn. So thank you again for letting us be part of this and for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rosa. And uh, apologies for the high cups uh, in the back. Uh, looks like we're facing some uh, intrusion. This is the, <laughs> the flip side of uh, going public. Thank you so much uh, for a rough presentation and also for your relentless energy throughout uh, the, the policy dialogue. Uh, we're really thrilled that uh, this all provides inputs for your decision making and policy making moving uh, forward. So really my pleasure now to introduce our third uh, speaker. Uh, uh, to tell us a bit more about the case of Groningen, which I uh, introduced upstream, so this doesn't need to be done again. And I'm uh, delighted now to welcome Annie Helbig, a policy advisor who is uh, actually covering for uh, Mrs. Glimina Shakor, the deputy mayor uh, of the city of Groningen, who had to deal with uh, a COVID uh, uh, last minute meeting. So Annie, please, you have the floor. So this is the OECD technician. Uh, we need to um, just wanted to let you know we've locked down the meeting a bit, so people will no longer be able to uh, unmute by themselves. So uh, hopefully this will prevent the disruption. So um, <laughs> if the person who needs to uh, speak, if they can raise their hands so that. Uh, so that I can unmute them, or if uh, one of my colleagues can unmute them, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have no more disruptions. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. First of all, I would like to um, thank the OECD for joining them in the program, participating in the OECD program, Circular Economy in Cities and Regions. This gave us the opportunity to get a thorough analysis on uh, the circular economy in Groningen and also uh, get a comparison uh, with, with other cities and regions in Europe and get uh, several recommendations. Um, First of all, uh, I would like to tell something about uh, the, the, the history from 2018. Um, circular economy, of course, 
isn't a completely new new topic, also not in Groningen. There's quite something, quite some things happening. For example, on waste reduction, um, local food chains. Um, like Ms. Moose already said, we've got an ambition, ambitious uh, energy program to become carbon neutral in 2035. Um, we did quite some things on circular water management. But all the uh, actions we, that took place were quite fragmented. Uh, there wasn't a coherent uh, uh, unity. And um, also the, the, the global uh, uh, ambition wasn't uh, clear. So um, in 2018, the city council came with an initiative to uh, and, and question to the to the city board uh, to make a, a, a roadmap for circular economy. Uh, that was more or less the beginning, the starting point. Uh, and then uh, in 2019 or at the end of 2018, we uh, came into contact with the OECD on this program. And like I said, we were very happy to join it because it gave us uh, the opportunity to to make this thorough analysis we've got now, and uh, we're very glad to have a report. Uh, we can and we can present it now for uh, on this um, on this webinar. Um, the analysis we got from the OECD uh, led to a roadmap, and I will tell something more about that uh, later on. And, I would like to have the next slide, please. Um, this roadmap we, we made uh, by using the analysis of the OECD uh, in, in the, in the, in the very, thorough re very thorough report. And the OECD did a lot of recommendations. Um, the themes, uh, they, uh, they, they uh, presented in their report are presented on this slide. And we focused on, in the roadmap for Groningen, we focused on uh, uh, several local areas. In the first place, energy, like uh, we already said, energy, uh, the energy program is very uh, ambitious. Um, and uh, one of the focusing themes will be energy. Uh, secondly is water and sanitation. The third, biomass and food. The fourth, waste fifth construction and demolition and uh, the sixth and last the SMEs because the SMEs are, are is a very important sector in Groningen and uh, we think that we can, can use them very well to uh, to get to the ambition we have. Um, like I said we 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 focused on several uh, areas and um, especially waste is, is one of the, the sectors we're, we're working very hard on. Uh, we already had the ambition to become uh, uh, completely circular in, in, our, in terms of waste in 2025. Uh, that's very ambitious. Um, we don't know if we're going to make it, but uh, we're hard working on it. And at this uh, moment, we already um, Re recycle 65% of all the waste. Um, I would like the next slide, please. One of the other things we um, we wrote in our roadmap is is our six principles. Um, we, we focused on several themes, but these six principles are, are also the focus, um, the focusing for, for what to do. And uh, partly they, uh, I come to, in the last slide, I come to the recommendations of the OECD. These are also recommendations of the OECD. Um, first of all, we want to enable our residents and companies to develop a circular future for themselves. So we, we want to, uh, uh, enable, but also f facilitate and promote. That that are the four, the three roles uh, the OECD also uh, suggested. And uh, well, especially enable uh, residents and companies is very important. As an organization, we want to be a role model. 
uh, this also comes to uh, the, the procurement. Um, we don't do can we can do this alone, but together with partners such as the knowledge institutes, the companies, and all the residents. Um, the other one is we regard waste as an important potential raw material, and for example. Um, uh, one of the projects we're working on now is a circular hub. This hub has to be uh, a place where people can put their uh, waste and where companies and also the municipality will upgrade this waste into raw material again. So one of the aims is also to close those raw material cycles as much as possible. We support where possible uh, from ownership to use. Um, we do that also do that ourselves now, for example, the procurement of, of all the furniture of the municipality uh, is, is one of is, is, a, is an example uh, for this one. Um, and the last one, we are committed to uh, high quality reuse. And uh, as said in the introduction by Ms. Akmoush, um, I think the, the, the current crisis uh, will um, I think we'll fast on this, this process. Um, it's quite dramatic, of course, but, but for, I think it, it will give us also, uh, um, yeah, it will catalyze in a, in a way um, this process. I would like the last seat, please. Um, these are all the, the recommendations the OECD made in the action plan. Um, and I won't uh, name them all, but uh, like I already said, uh, we want to be a role model as, as a city. Um, the second one is to map the existing uh, initiatives. Uh, the OECD spoke to more than 30 uh, stakeholders in our uh, city and region, and a lot of companies, uh, they already do nice things. So those, those circular initiatives, those, those, those good examples, we want to share. Um, we also uh, uh, promote those, that stakeholder engagement. Uh, one of the other ones I already mentioned, uh, we want to be a, 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 a ship. By, by, the, by procurement, we want to uh, create demand uh, by being a launching customer. Um, we also facilitate uh, coordination across the municipal uh, departments and across regional and provincial strategies. Um, and also we want to facilitate the connection between urban and rural areas. Um, we also uh, uh, create spaces for experimentation, especially on energy, we already do that. And um, at last, uh, the last one I want to mention is to enable the circular economy transition beyond uh, electoral cycles. So um, by, by having this report of the OECD uh, uh, is also, uh, gives also a st stable uh, policy for the next uh, years. Well, I think I'm more or less out of time. Uh, so again, I want to thank the OECD for this opportunity. And I'm looking forward to uh, the, the live meeting in, in, uh, in, the, in the month of November. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Anne Helbig, Policy Advisor uh, in the city of Groningen, Netherlands, for uh, introducing uh, the key findings from the policy dialogue with your city and uh, this impressive list of recommendations. I understand that uh, there has been quite a robust co-production of an action plan for the municipality to, in a shared responsibility across levels of government and stakeholders, to make these recommendations happen for 
the years to come. So that's quite uh, an ambitious uh, uh, step moving forward. Thank you for that. And I'm pretty sure this will trigger uh, interesting discussion with the audience. We have received a few questions. Uh, actually, I've got one for Valladolid, one for Umea. If you have more questions to ask the speakers, please do so via the chat. We are collecting them. I will now give the floor to uh, the last speaker of this first half of the webinar, uh, Evelyn Jonkov. Evelyn, you've been acting as what we call peer reviewer in this process, sharing your wisdom, your city experience as a strategic advisor and, and program manager for circular economy in Amsterdam uh, with the different cities that we've heard. Uh, I'd like to uh, hand over the floor to you for uh, some uh, messages on your side and then we'll open the floor uh, and address uh, some of the questions that have been uh, flagged. Evelyn, you have the floor. So, yes, thank you so much. And um, maybe we can go back to the previous slide um, because these are unprecedented times, as you said, and that even more or less that, that, that gives us now a unique opportunity to share via this webinar hosted by uh, the OECD a chance to exchange those experience on how becoming a circular city and as the colleague from Groningen also expressed uh, maybe we can catalyze uh, this transition in this uh, unprecedented times. Um, you asked me first to share uh, a bit of my experience as a peer reviewer. Uh, I'm more than happy to do so, of course. And just a few observations. And what I encountered first was the enormous willingness to learn, to be open for peer reviewing, to start this OECD trajectory, and um, to see there is political commitments and leadership. And I think that is crucial to start this uh, journey. Um, and also uh, what I see was a very active role of, for instance, universities, of innovative companies. And, and that's very important because we as cities are in a position to build bridges, to build bridges between colleagues from different departments, from different municipalities, from SMEs with companies, uh, universities, because we need them all. We need all those different experience and perspectives in order to change our linear system into a circular one and to uh, maintain resilient cities. Uh, and it means also when you start this journey, it's important to uh, pinpoint your starting point. What are your strong, what are your, your strengths? What are the opportunities in your own cities? So that's, so every city has this unique starting point as I learned as a peer reviewer, so you said. And um, for cities it's also challenging. So to, for the first time, invite all those stakeholders at the same table, discuss, uh, reflect, on uh, the different uh, perspectives. Um, there were intriguing questions to be asked and to be answered. Um, and that's helpful because you can use that as a city to develop a holistic strategy, to design your own moonshots, uh, to lead the way. And we as a city can and have to lead by example uh, for instance, by using procurement is a very powerful policy instrument because we can steer the market in the right direction. And we have a lot of policy instruments like also like urban planning or facilitating this kind of dialogues, give financial support, uh, connect the different uh, sectors, um, tendering land. Um, and I think all those policy instruments are in place to start uh, the journey. And that was also what I learned from other cities. Everyone can start this journey. We all have a unique position. And what we have in common is our drive. 
the, the necessity and, and the chance to become a circular city. And that was very inspiring. So we can learn a lot from our unique approaches and combine them. And, and I think uh, OECD as a leading organization is also in unique position to combine all those lessons learned and open them up uh, via this kind of webinars to other cities to learn from. And peer reviewing is also a very unique instrument because it gives you the opportunity for a deep dive to have the time to um, discuss and learn and reflect with all those different stakeholders at the same table for a couple of days. And I think peer reviewing uh, is for every city a great instrument to continue and to continue the learning because everybody can start. And I would like to invite all cities to to learn from this kind of leadership for these leading cities and, and start learning by doing. Uh, so these are a few observations from the, uh, my role as peer reviewer. And uh, I would very much like to thank those cities and the OECD for having this opportunity. And secondly, um, a few minutes um, for, for sharing with you uh, a few slides of the approach of Amsterdam. Uh, next slide, please. A thriving, regenerative and inclusive city for all citizens while respecting the planetary boundaries. So that's our ambition and that's the Amsterdam goal. Because for us, it's clear that we need a fundamental change of our present system, of the way we produce and consume. It's the only way forward and circular economy is the strategy to reach this goal. And at the same time, create more jobs for everyone and everybody in our cities. And give everybody access. I think that's also very important. Give everybody access to this uh, system change. Um, because everybody can strengthen their own position and learn and, 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 and yeah, it's also strengthening well-being of every system. I think that that's, that's very important as well. Next slide, please. So to make it more concrete, our goal is to have a 50% reduction of primarily resources by 2030 in order to realize at the latest in 2050 a 100% circular and climate neutral city. Next slide, please. And we start our journey back in 2015, together with Circular Economy and a lot of partners, we realized an in-depth research into the potential of a circular economy and asking ourselves, what could or should be our role as a local government? And we have, we do have an important role uh, to play. Uh, so we uh, decided to focus on two important value chains, the built environment as well as the food and organic waste stream value chain. So that we translated that into 70 projects we realized in the years 2016 and 2017. We evaluated them and we add one very important value chain to the other two, namely the consumer good value chain. So that was the port starting point in this new political term. So in the spring of 2019, together with a lot of colleagues from all different departments um, and the private sector, we developed the building blocks for our new five-year strategy. And at the same time, we also realized last year 116 new circular projects, ranging from research, innovation and scaling up existing projects. So next slide, please. So to be published uh, next week, uh, we will launch online our new five year strategy for the period 2020 to 2025, based on the three value chains and based on the experience of all our colleagues, the private sector, citizens and research institutions. And we also translated that in a learning by doing strategy 
So this year and next year, we will realize 200 new projects in the field of circular economy. And we will also launch uh, next week a uh, first monitor uh, to monitor the transition towards a circular economy and a circular city. So we developed a lot of indicators on input, throughput and output indicators, as well on, on, the, uh, on the broader well-being, so the well-being of our citizens. Next slide, please. And we will also launch, together with Kate Rareth of Donut Economics, C40 and Circle Economy, the first city donut, which is part of the Thriving Cities Initiative of C40. So um, Kate and her team realizes for a city donut, looking via four lenses to our city to see what our impact is on both the local and the global level from a societal perspective as well as an environmental perspective. So four lenses, we will launch that uh, next week. And within this Thriving City initiative, we work together with Philadelphia and Portland on the city donut. Last slide, please. So stay tuned because we will launch this next week and looking forward to your feedback, your recommendations, uh, your questions. And let's use this unique webinar in this unprecedented times to stay connected because we can change. We have to change and we will change. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Evelyn, and uh, for your generosity throughout the process, uh, sharing your experience with uh, peer cities in that uh, policy dialogue uh, initiative. So we'll, we'll do a little pause now and I'll uh, open the floor to share a few questions. There are many questions in the chat, so I will be selective. Apologies uh, to the participants, but uh, rest assured that we will uh, convey uh, them after uh, the webinar, the pending questions that they uh, won't have had a chance to respond to. Um, I'll uh, start with Valladolid. Rosa, there are a few questions for you. Uh, you don't need to respond to all of them. The idea that uh, is that each of uh, uh, the four of you takes, uh, you know, one, two minutes uh, maximum um, to, to provide a, a very uh, concise uh, response to the extent possible. Um, the, and, and I will pick two basically for you, Rosa. The first one is uh, whether you can elaborate a bit more on the evaluation criteria that you have applied to select uh, the winning award projects in 2019. So that's an easy one. Uh, and if you have uh, public information on that, uh, there's a bit in the report that uh, can be uh, referred to. Please um, mention it. And the second one is um, what were the implications of the series Circular economy action plans in Valladolid on special planning and land use. Uh, if you could say, for instance, whether there were any direct benefits for local citizens of the initiatives um, uh, that you have uh, supported financially, uh, and uh, if you can elaborate a bit on the funding for uh, those circular uh, projects. Uh, we mentioned a million euro, what are the sources uh, of finance? So a bit on the criteria for selection, a bit on the envelope, uh, financially speaking, and then a question on linking to land use and uh, special planning. All this in a minute and a half, Rosa. You don't have to be comprehensive. Please, you have the floor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, well, okay. Uh, regarding the criteria, we have different criteria to select for us. The employment creation or the employment improvement is very important. Uh, also, of course, the technical quality of the, of the project uh, and including social impacts or, or other kind of in, impacts like environmental impacts. Also for us, uh, it's important that the project counts on different support, not only the support from the municipality, not only the support from the promoter, but even the support for the third parties. And also for, for us, uh, it's important to belong to a specific sector. Each call has defined some specific 
in sectors we want to promote. So that mm -hmm. is another thing we take into account, as well as in uh, eco innovation. That is having the circular perspective just for from the very beginning. Not it's only about recycling or something like that, but also have this uh, holistic view or, of the project. And uh, and what you said about the the impact of this on the circular strategy about urban planning. Well, in Valladolid for years, we have been growing the city, but uh, spreading it. So the population was going, was uh, shrinking, but the, but, the, but the urban space was growing. That was not sustainable at all, because we need a lot of uh, transport, a lot of uh, uh, facilities. And now our uh, current urban plan, plan that has to be approved in some weeks, uh, has a completely different vision of a city. We want the city as a compact city. So we have to, to take advantage of the already spaces, of the already buildings that are in the city. We, are, we don't want to build anymore. We have to take advantage of what we already have and to, and to be able to share it and put different uses in different in the same places in the same places being able to share different use i think that the this idea of the compact cities and the share uh, use of public space can sub, sum up our idea good thank you very much rosa i now turn to the uh, speaker from groningen annie um here's the question for you what were the actions taken in regards to construction and demolition in particular what was demolished and why and was it replaced by something else and how was the decision for uh, demolition taken and were the materials used afterwards uh, for something else so uh, uh, a zoom on the construction and, and demolition part of your uh, intervention, Annie. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, well, especially um, on the on the uh, in the area where the former sugar factory was in Groningen, um, there was a, le a lot of the, the old factory is dem demolished, and we started uh, uh, reusing the concrete uh, in on that uh, in that area. Um, that's that's one of the most concrete. Uh, uh, actions that has taken place and we also gave uh, several builders the opportunity to uh, to start cir with circular building on that area from the beginning the idea was to make it a, a circular uh, area development so we also think about how to uh, how to use uh, uh, the water uh, cycles in the area but but the most concrete one was was the, the or well, the demolishing of the old factory and the using of the uh, partly using of the buildings for new purposes and using the concrete for building. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I have two questions for Deputy Mayor Janet Agren uh, from the city of Umea in Sweden. Uh, Deputy Mayor, if you can talk about your process prior to developing the roadmaps or strategies, how did you build the support and political will to embark on your circular uh, economy planning or roadmap building? Who were the champions? Uh, did you face resistance or, or challenges such as funding limitations? How did you overcome them? Uh, and a related question, if you can uh, share your experience with innovative financing that can be uh, catalyzed for circular economy uh, solutions. Um, Janet? Hello? Yes, we hear yes. you well. Um, when it comes to climate uh, change and uh, those issues, it's been uh, high on agenda, uh, on the on the political agenda, and we've been de debating it for, for, for many years, and it's also from the citizens that they are demanding us to have this on high on the agenda. So when we put the, the target and set the, set the goals, uh, uh, there was not a big debate about uh, us uh, commitment, uh, decided to commit to several economy. Uh, but uh, we took the goal and set set agenda. But now we must take the next step, and therefore this uh, this uh, study is a great help for us to 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 become better because uh, 
we took the target, but now we must do the real work. And now we're on in the doing phase. So therefore, this study is, uh, is very important for us. So uh, uh, we don't have the uh, opinion that there's been a big debate on the local level, whereas we should uh, commit to this uh, or, or not. Um, so when it comes to the, the financing bit, we, of course, now a lot of our thoughts and actions are to cope with the COVID-19 uh, crisis, but uh, we have put a, 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 an assignment for our city staff to, to calculate uh, the cost for us in the future. We're doing this because we want to be a climate neutral city, so we have to, to look at the, our economy and the cost of, for that reason, but we're doing it also because of the circular economy. So that's a work we, that we have dedicated to our city staff and then they will come back and then the political discussion will start. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor. And last but not least, I have two questions for Evelyn uh, from the city of Amsterdam. Evelyn, you mentioned in your intervention input through output indicators. So the question is, how about impact indicators? Uh, and if be so, do they relate to the SDGs targets, 11.6 uh, or 12.5 or others? That's the first question. The second one is how was the visionary overarching goal formulated? And is there a political and citizen consensus on this? I see that this uh, social acceptance, both politically and socially, is something that comes back again and again uh, in the different questions that seems to be uh, of, of high interest to the audience. So, Evelyn, if you'd like to touch base briefly on these two questions. Yes, thank you so much for these uh, questions. First of all, around the, the indicators. Uh, input, throughput and output indicators are illustrative for the urban metabolism. And related to that, we can uh, monitoring impact uh, because that's, that's the final goal is to measure impact. And that's also the reason that we combine it with say the social uh indicators the broader well-being because we do believe that that's important so that's the whole system is around this broad range of indicators to to measure impact to measure social well-being and to measure all aspects of our economic and social system and also to measure what we call the indirect CO2 emissions. So we're taking up our responsibility not only to become a climate neutral city within our city boundaries, but also to take up responsibility for the CO2 emissions we cause elsewhere in the world simply by using all that stuff, all those products within our city. So that's also a very important aspect uh, from our monitoring system and that's really about impact in order to reach the Paris Agreement of course. Uh, related to the second question, uh, referring to the second question, uh, our overarching uh, ambition uh, was driven by the thinking of Kate Raworth, the donut economics, so staying within the planetary boundaries of this one earth and at the same time strengthen our social foundation so that we can all live between the outer and the inner circle, a safe and just space for humanity in order to realize a regenerative and inclusive uh, city. Um, and that is, uh, we, we, we launched that also in the spring last year and it's embraced and, and, and it's uh, strengthened by political commitment as well as social commitment because we uh, develop our uh, strategy and our uh, program together with all these different stakeholders and we share also uh, draft versions of our thinking openly with all stakeholders. I think it's stakeholders, it's, it's so important because that's your starting point, your starting point as a city lies within society. Good. Thank you very much, Evelyn, and uh, many thanks to all uh, four speakers for that uh, first part that uh, put uh, a spotlight on the three uh, OECD reports that you can all download uh, from our uh, iLibrary website. Uh, 
the circular economy in the city of Umea, in Sweden, uh, in the city of Groningen, in the Netherlands, and in the city of Valladolid in Spain. I'd like to congratulate the team led by Oriana for the excellent work. Uh, we had a dream a year and a half ago, and uh, you guys made it happen. So thank you so much, and to the uh, uh, city representatives for uh, spending uh, a bit of time with us, uh, uh, showcasing some of the takeaways from uh, these reports that are now uh, final online and uh, hopefully will guide uh, decision making uh, in circular economy for the years to come. That takes me now to the second part of the presentation which is um, aiming at uh, showing uh, three new generation of uh, cases that we are currently working with and that should uh, be released, published, uh, final by uh, the end of the year uh, and we have invited uh, those uh, city and country representatives to uh, share also uh, some of the highlights uh, of these respective uh, cases. Uh, it's my pleasure to start uh, with the city of Glasgow in the United Kingdom um, and introduce uh, Mrs. Cheryl Robb, uh, who's the manager uh, for cities and regions in zero waste uh, Scotland. Uh, we have uh, already started to work with uh, the case of uh, Glasgow. Uh, we had a, a few interviews Views virtually um, over the past uh, few weeks, and uh, uh, and and we'll likely uh, have more uh, in the course of uh, April. We are uh, curious to hear from you, Cheryl, in terms of what are uh, the few messages you'd like to convey about the case of uh, Glasgow. You have the floor, and we are uh, managing the slides uh, from the secretariat as in the past. So just let us know when you want uh, colleagues to move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, could you move on to the first slide, please? Thank you. Excellent. So, yes, I am going to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing in Glasgow. And so I represent Zero Waste Scotland. Uh, we are a, a not-for-profit environmental organisation funded by Scottish Government and European Regional Development Fund. But this project is very much a partnership project and on the webinar today I know uh, we also have representatives from Glasgow City Council, Colin Hughes, and from Glasgow Chamber of Commerce who operate the Circular Glasgow Initiative. That's Cheryl McCulloch. So hello to them. Um, could you go to the next slide please? So yeah, just really wanted to draw out the importance of that partnership approach for us. We feel it is quite unique and it gives us a, a variety of different perspectives. We started that uh, partnership in 2015 when we conducted the Circle City Scan to identify circular economy opportunities for the city of Glasgow. And since then we've been working really hard with businesses and other stakeholders to encourage and support the development of circular approaches. And we're looking forward to taking that, that step further now by having the, the independent review that participation in the policy dialogues will bring. With a population of 600,000 approximately, eh, Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland. And in 2018, we hosted the Circular Economy Hotspot. And it was during that the Council made the commitment to develop a circular economy route map. And that's seen as a really important opportunity to affect that systemic change that we really need uh, you know, in the city economy to achieve sustainability through repositioning commercial activities, but also ensuring that we're going to have a lasting positive social impact. The outline action plan for the route map has identified numerous sectors that will be influenced over the next decade, but it also highlights some short term high impact opportunities, for example, through public procurement and embed embedding sustainability in school curriculum. And that uh, is due for publication, the route map is due for publication in late summer this year. And just to touch quickly on a couple of other drivers for us, we started our, our place-based approach to driving circular economy in Glasgow, but we uh, are now working with all the seven cities in Scotland. And our vision at Zero Waste Scotland is very much to develop a network of connected circular cities throughout the whole of Scotland. So we really value the opportunity to learn from international be best practice for our cities, but as a country, as a nation as well. Could you move on to the next slide, please? 
And just to touch quickly on that transition, so we have been working on this for a number of years already. We have a well-established network of circular businesses in the city. Don't have time to, co up, to cover some of them today, but I would encourage you to visit the Circular Glasgow website and there's some great case studies on that. We've also established a baseline that 6% of jobs in the city are in the circular economy. So that gives us a really good figure to, to build on and to use when we're starting to influence decision makers. I've already mentioned we have extensive engagement with businesses in the city. Some of the key sectors are mentioned here. And these are key sectors for the city economy, but also because we know they offer a number of circular opportunities. But it's not just about businesses, we are really wanting to embed this approach, so we're working with education, with universities and, and skills as well. And I have to mention, of course, in November, COP26 is coming to Glasgow, and that really has accelerated the, the pace of change and really focused the mind. And as well as the Circular Economy route map, the Council have declared a climate emergency and have also set themselves a net zero target for 2030. So really through participating in the OECD programme, we want to pull all of this together, identify gaps and be more strategic in our approach and really start to influence policy in Glasgow. And could you move on to the next slide, please? So finally, yeah, we are hoping to have our first virtual mission in April. Uh, a bit different to what we'd originally planned, but we're really looking forward to more of those conversations with stakeholders. We really want to align the, the policy dialogue outputs with the circular economy route map, and we're hoping to have some outputs prepared in advance of COP26, so we're able to share that there. But most importantly, really, is the legacy for the city after hosting COP26, so we want to bear that in mind. And the final point there really is around sharing the, the lessons learned. We want to ensure that the learnings from our participation in, in the OECD policy dialogue programme are shared across Scotland so we can drive informed change and support our other cities with insight and experience to accelerate the pace of change there as well. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, sharing the experience of uh, Glasgow and for this teaser to what's coming and we look forward to the uh, uh, development of the policy messages of the dialogue and I'm sure you'll have a, a few other opportunities in this roundtable setting to uh, peer review the findings and, and uh, learn from uh, colleagues and, and the other way around. Now, uh, my pleasure to turn to our representative from Granada in Spain and to introduce Agustin Castillo Martinez, who is the General Coordinator of Public Works and Urban Development in the city of Granada. Uh, Granada is one of the cities where we have uh, started the policy dialogues, uh, which is close to completion. We are uh, uh, pending uh, a final trip to uh, peer review and build consensus on the recommendations with uh, your stakeholders. Uh, but meanwhile, Agustin, please, uh, you have the floor to share some of the takeaway uh, messages from this process. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon from Granada. Despite the circumstances we are all involved in, it's my pleasure to be here this afternoon. Thank you so much. And thank you for, on behalf of the City of uh, city Council of, of Granada. Uh, may I have the next, next slide, please? Okay, so the, um, uh, there's some pe peculiarities about the population of, of Granada. The, the municipality holds a population of 232,000 itself, but the, the metropolitan area it has a population of more than five, 530,000. So it is also home for one of the oldest universities in Spain, welcoming more than 65,000 students and more than 3,000 teachers every year. And also as a home of the UNESCO heritage sites, the Alhambra and Albaicín, we welcome more than 3 million tourists every year. So um, big population to welcome every, every year. Um, and uh, the, the figures of the population of the city don't, doesn't, don't show how much uh, we have to cope with uh, from an economic point of view. So um, in 
the good news is that the environmental indicators have shown great improvement in the last 15 years due to important programs pushing to improve the practices in both public and private economic activities. So, so uh, I think we have um, a lot to do, but the, the, the ground uh, base is, is well, well done. Uh, next slide, please. So our, our main lanes of work um, we have to, to point today are, are these. The first, from a political point of view, Granada subscribed the Declaration of Seville in 2017, setting a commitment to initiate procedures to encourage circular economy in public and private city activities. Uh, currently, regional and national legislations are being prepared to be approved, uh, specifically about circular economy and le legal guidelines. Uh, second, our main project is focused in water cycle of management. The, the city of Granada, through a public-private partnership by the name of Emasagra, has increased focus on the role of water within circular economy standards. The recent transformation of wastewater treatment plant into a biofactory allowed the increasing reuse of water and the generation of energy. Our aim is reaching zero waste, zero energy balance and zero emissions by the end of this year. Um, Granada Biofactory has been certified by the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform and in this project we're changing from linear economy standards to circular economy standards for being uh, big consumers of energy to producers even 120% energy generation growth uh, recently we are moving from having a facility which uh, waste goes to landfill to generation resources as raw materials for other processes and we're moving from a facility where water is purified and returned to the nat natural environment to a biofactory which reuses treated water. It is the most important and rep representative innovation that we have carried out, carried out so far, an innovative concept for the whole city. The circular economy demands a cultural change, breaking with all paradigms, uh, changing our way of acting and analyzing problems in order to obtain a different results that, that entails social, environmental and economic benefit. And City Council is focused in leading such a, a social change uh, using this project as an example. And from this point of view, the third main line of projects is related to the Touch Digital City Economy Transformation Initiative. Uh, it is an European Commission uh, initiative uh, supporting 15 cities in Europe, including three in Spain. Um, it, it helps to achieve sustainable economic growth in Granada through the integration of advanced technologies. The initiative fosters synergies between existing policies involving digital priorities and some of the projects are um, EG 2020 Strategy Granada, Granada Human Smart City, DUSI Granada Strategy Program and Granada Smart City Strategy Plan. Uh, this strategy for the city of of Granada will be implemented through a group of activities as the creation of citizenship innovation laboratory that will define and detail the open data strategy for the city and that will start deploying the digital innovation hub in the city of Granada. And last but not least, we have had the support um, and collaboration of OECD and peer reviewers in these efforts. Some of the most important actions related to this collaboration include the interviews carried out by the OECD in Granada with 54 stakeholders that provided different valuable approaches for the project. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, I hope it helps. Thank you very much. Um, and as background, because I see someone is raising the point via the chat, we will, of course, share uh, the PowerPoint presentations with all the speakers alongside uh, the list of participants uh, at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much for the experience of Granada. Uh, I now move to our uh, third uh, new uh, case study, uh, which is uh, work in the pipeline. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mrs. Bernie Kai. Assistant Principal in the Department of Communications, Climate Action and Environment of Ireland. Uh, very happy to have a, a national government representative. We're um, working uh, at the uh, scale of Ireland in, in your uh, specific case. You have the floor, please, to introduce some of your uh, takeaway messages. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me nice and clearly from the um, Irish countryside here on a lovely sunny day. 
Um, I'd great to see some names that I recognise too from the uh, list of participants. Uh, so thank you very much for having me on today. Um, thank you to the OECD for inviting us to join the project in the, in the first instance. And as you say, it is unusual for um, to have a state as one of the partners. It is, um, I suppose, Ireland is a small is a small country, and in in a way, we are typical maybe of a of a region. Um, in the way they are structured, if it's quite a centralised state. So some of the learnings, I think, can be applicable right across to the partners. And indeed, from what I've heard this morning, I can hear already some of the same issues around fragmentation and the need to be more strategic and um, being reflected in the municipalities who've already presented. So I think there's a lot more that we have in common than, um, than, than differentiates us. So if we could go on to the, the next slide, I'll just talk through and the, the next one, please. I'll just talk through just very briefly the a very high level features of the sector economy in Ireland. Um, we're just very new kids on the block to the project. So um, it's lovely to be able to introduce ourselves. Um, so to give you a very high level impression of the circular economy in Ireland, I would say that domestically, the concept of the circular economy is not widely recognised um, across the policy and the economic sectors. We had uh, a survey done by our um, EPA, our Environment Protection Agency, in the last year with the Irish Business Employers Confederation, and they found that amongst business leaders, only 50% even understood the term circular economy. Now, Amongst those, there was a very high rate of um, those who saw the potential for circular economy gains in the Irish economy and for the environment, so all is not lost. But there is much work to do. We do find that we take our lead a lot from developments within the European Union. Their new circular economy action plan, the second one, gives us focus and is one of the main drivers, I suppose, in our ambition to realise a circular economy in Ireland. Uh, I think with the very unusual times that we're experiencing at the moment, we see the opportunity as well for uh, new thinking and uh, we see evidence of great local resilience here in particular and we hope that we can capitalise on those kind of um, opportunities that we have available to us. So just to briefly introduce two I suppose shining lights of the circular economy in Ireland, the, the Rediscovery Centre and a new project called Circulaire. Sorry, you skipped on, can you go back, <laughs> please? So the Rediscovery Centre is um, a, a facility in, in Dublin and I'd encourage you to look up its website to see all that it does there. It reaches right across the entire spectrum of demonstration, research and education and has very practical roots too in social enterprise with remaking furniture and fashion, paint and bikes. So really heavy on reuse and showing what's possible. So very much founded, I suppose, and, and, and firmly rooted in, in community and social enterprise, but also um, a strategic focus nationally. And Circulaire then is a very recent uh, initiative that's kicked off. It's a public-private partnership of manufacturing research and climate kick, as some of you might know, as a, a funding organisation and our government to develop projects in manufacturing. So if this was an exciting opportunity for us to get involved in boots on the ground to help reduce greenhouse gases emissions and water, energy and materials and to bring our industry, pharmaceuticals, the food industry and others through that journey of self-examination and self-assessment to the point of where they see the opportunity of what they can do to make their processes more circular. So if we go on to the next slide for me please. So basically this is our, our first toe in the water in the project. I'm uh, very proud to be a partner in it and it coincides with a review of our national waste policy. Um, our public consultation has just concluded and that will, we're assessing those consultation submissions at the moment. Um, 
as I already mentioned, the European Commission Circular Action Economy Action Plan has just been published. So we're examining that and considering how we can best respond to that and meet, meet its ambition in our own um, in our own strategy, um, but also in actions. And I noticed, I suppose I took note of the, the three words of promote, facilitate, and enable that came up in the other partners. So I think that will that will be a useful mantra for us in, in developing our and new strategies. So we've already had three web-based interviews with the OECD because we were hit straight away with, with the coronavirus um, difficulties. But I'm, I'd like to congratulate the OECD for responding and, and showing great resilience itself in keeping the, uh, keeping the show on the road and in enabling and facilitating the mission to go on, albeit electronically. Um, and I hope that when you come over we can um, develop the develop the relationship better, and look we look forward to receiving your insight and recommendations. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bernie, for uh, sharing uh, some of the Irish uh, experience and the roadmap uh, for completing this uh, policy dialogue. I will now, um, and keeping in, in mind that we're slightly behind schedule, not too much, but uh, still uh, uh, 10 minutes behind, um, pause a, a bit for uh, some Q&A. We have received questions um, for Glasgow, Granada, Ireland has just completed the presentation, so please uh, keep asking via the chat uh, if you have a question for Ireland in particular. Uh, meanwhile, I will uh, start with Glasgow. So, Cheryl, uh, you would go first. And here's the question. What are the specific sectors that you will target in your circular economy action plan? Uh, waste, construction, others, and who are the leading stakeholders? Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so in terms of sectors, we we have a number of business sectors that we are already targeting and that they are, uh, for example, food and drink, uh, construction, manufacturing, events. So they will, I suppose, play a part in the route map. Um, in terms of the council services, so it, it will encompass I suppose, everything that the council delivers from you know, education, social care, spatial planning, roads, waste. Um, so it, it will be broad. Um, the, so it's not, I'm not personally writing at the route maps. So I don't want to say, speak too much out of turn on behalf of the council who are responsible for leading it. That is some of the, I suppose, sectors and themes we can expect to see, but it'll be relatively a uh, high level, I would, I would say. Um, and then we'll be looking to a range of services within the council and other city stakeholders to actually take action. And the stakeholders are, you know, I think they're probably too many to mention at the moment because we've been doing some stakeholder mapping, uh, you know, in advance of the policy dialogue. So. We have, you know, our universities, we have community organisations, we have some of our innovating, innovating businesses that are already leading the way, pioneering around circular economy, from small businesses to large corporates as well, um, making sure we've got themes represented as well from design, finance sector and so on. So, yeah, it's very broad. Good. Thank you very much, uh, Cheryl. And now I move to Agustin uh, from Granada, and that's a pretty easy one. Where can we find more information about the Water Cycle Management Initiative of Granada? Well, the, um, uh, right now in, in the um, um, uh, City Council um, um, uh, web page, we are getting ready a platform so we can um, start uh, um, sensitizing and, and communicating about the results of the project. As I told you, our goal is precisely set on the end of this year. So when, when we get our, our final data for the project, when we attain our zero emissions and, um, and at the end of the project is a success, we will start communicating and uh, through the, our web page and probably through seminars in, in, in the city about the, the experience and knowledge we have. And right now uh, um, we're getting ready all the results and we'll probably soon have a, a web page on, 
and the uh, Granada.org um, web page to 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 make to make public our our, our experience and, and knowledge. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Agustina. And then I'll take a last question. Sorry, there are many more, but as I said earlier, I promise we will channel them to the speakers alongside uh, the details of the person asking the question so that you can continue the conversation after the webinar. But I pick a last one for Ireland. So I go back to you, Bernie. Uh, the, cons the public consultation for your national circular economy strategy has just finished and results were analyzed. What are the main issues that were uh, uh, flagged by Irish stakeholders? Thank you for the question. Um, well, the assessment is ongoing at the moment, so we haven't made our way through all several hundred submissions. But um, I suppose the some of the things that are uh, are coming up involve um, the what, a lot of it is around waste management and, and recycling, and the need to move to re reuse. Um, rather than relying on uh, recycling as a means of meeting our environmental challenges. Um, so, uh, and, and in Ireland, uh, we're, we're at the end of a supply chain, so we need to look at what is our capacity for making the most of the materials that come into our country without exporting them. And at this particular time, with the lockdown of the coronavirus, we can see some of those vulnerabilities are exposed even more so. So we need to look at our resilience uh, in that particular uh, part of the supply chain. So yes, reuse is, it, it is a big topic. Good, good. There's a, another question also for you, Bernie, but uh, if you can be please very sure in the response, if, if you see any uh, diverging or conflicting uh, initiatives uh, in a, in a bottom-up fashion that come from your cities and, and, and how you, you drive from the national government level a sort of collaborative approach uh, to harmonize and, and support these uh, very local initiatives. I think probably through, we need to promote more the circular economy concept with our municipalities, our, our, our local authorities, so that uh, local initiatives can be supported locally and that it all doesn't rely on the, on the center. Um, and we work with our regional um, uh, colleagues in the waste management area. Uh, and we also use the and the Rediscovery Centre has been very helpful in developing a, a national academy where they support small local projects. So we do have an eye to that need and um, we're doing our best in that regard. Good. Thank you very much. And uh, to the three representatives from uh, uh, Granada, Glasgow and Ireland for this new generation of case studies, we look forward to the completion of the reports. That now takes me to the last part of the webinar. And we, we actually wanted to put a spotlight on Nordic countries, because as I said in the introduction, uh, the roundtable was initially meant to uh, happen in Oslo, and that will uh, likely be the case in uh, fall. But uh, it's always a good opportunity opportunity uh, to open the eyes of the audience to what's happening in a, in a specific part of the world. So I'm uh, delighted now to have two more uh, speakers that will share uh, some of their uh, experience in Nordic countries. And I will start with Hakon uh, Gentoft, Senior Executive Officer uh, for International Relations in the city of Oslo. Hakon, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Uh, you have the floor and many thanks for the great efforts you've put in the organization of the uh, webinar, but also this uh, uh, virtual session uh, of, the, of the round table. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a pity that you are not in Oslo today. It's a beautiful uh, spring day, cold and sunny in, in, in Oslo. So uh, uh, I wish you could all be here, but that's not the, that the situation at the moment. Um, I would like to bring you into a little bit of the work of, of the city of Oslo. Uh, uh, the city of Oslo was the green capital uh, of Europe uh, last year, and we have a long tradition and long policy tradition for, for the green policy and, and the way to work on that. And we also now have a political decision on uh, making a circular economy strategy. Um, so we will start up that work this year. 
So this is uh, uh, one of the introduction or more the introduction to how we will form this work on circular economy within the city of Oslo. Uh, next slide, please. I made a, a short slide here that seeing uh, you can see some of the elements that we would like to put in uh, in our strategy. We will build on what we already are doing. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, of strategies already developed and um, they will uh, form the ground of, of our next uh, of our strategy. I also put Circular Oslo in, in, in the middle of it. Um, what we like to do is to try to focus on how the city of Oslo is affecting the whole economy uh, and decision taking by the city of Oslo is affecting the, 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 the way that the economy is organized and how the different, um, both the producers, consumers, and what's becoming waste um, actually take in. So we will focus a lot on what we as a city has a responsibility for, how our decision is taken, both on political level, but also down to, to the different agencies producing services for the citizens. Um, you can see that green public procurement is mentioned. I think public procurement is one of the most important tools that we have within the city. It's also already mentioned by, by a lot of the other cities. So, so how we develop that will be very, very important. The second thing is to look into the consumption. We have already developed a strategy how to reduce the material consumptions, both in the city administration, but also to influence on citizens. And we will go on with that fill them in the, the line of how to reduce consumption, how to share, share and circulate, and how to replace. And, and we are looking into the possibilities of how the, cities, the city can uh, improve um, the work of the citizens, but also the, the uh, city themselves. Resource management is also mentioned. Um, waste is a part of that, of course, and we have high ambitions for, for waste management. But resource management is much more than just uh, uh, the waste that is uh, produced in the city. It's the, the, the metabolism, the flow of, of the resources through the city. And we will look, try to look into that resource flow and make the information of that resource flow um, available and accessible for as many actors as possible. Then we also have the climate emissions of Oslo, uh, which is to be a zero emission city by 2030, which is very ambitious. And we believe that the circular economy strategy <clears throat> will be a very important uh, element into our work to be a zero emission city. And also what is also mentioned by other cities, for instance, Amsterdam, it's not only what the emissions within this uh, city, but also how we are influencing on what's going on outside our city based on the consumption that we do in our city. So the circular economy principles will help us to, uh, to uh, be a zero emission, not only in the city, but also to reduce our um, uh, emission footprints elsewhere in, in the world. Next slide, please. So um, in short, we want to, we want to focus on how we as a city, how our decisions that we take every day is influencing on our suppliers, <clears throat> on how we are producing our services and, and the delivering of, of our services to our citizens. We, have, we would like to, to find out, <clears throat> to understand the role of the city in the circular economy. It's definitely there to support other existing city strategies. And it's there to, um, of what you also mentioned, so it's very important how we should include uh, industry and businesses, the NGOs and citizens. So um, all in all, the strategy will be a very important tool for the city in the development for the next decade to come to support the existing strategies, but also to, to uh, reach the, the SDGs and other environmental goals that we have for the city. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Håkon, and uh, uh, for these insights into circular economy as a means to an end and uh, much needed connection with other uh, strategies and, and much broader uh, societal, economic and environmental outcomes. Point uh, taken. Um, I will now move to our uh, second speaker uh, that will uh, shed light on uh, uh, Nordic countries' experience, Elise uh, Benedictson, Senior Advisor 
advisor in Nordic Innovation, uh, another uh, partner in crime alongside the city of Oslo of the OECD to organize uh, the roundtable, the second edition of the roundtable, but also this uh, uh, webinar, Me and Wild. Thank you very much, Elise, for all the efforts you've put into this and uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Aziza, and, and thank you to Ariana and Ander and, and all of you at, at the OECD. And hello to, to everyone uh, on, on the webinar. Uh, also, uh, greetings from Osani Oslo from my side. Um, if you please can move to the next slide. I have the challenging uh, role of, of being the last speaker <laughs> uh, today, but uh, I, will, I will try to give you kind of a helicopter view of, of the status of circularity in the Nordics. I, I will do this on a national or country level, uh, as well as on a, on a Nordic cooperation level. But this, of course, it trickles down to the regions, the cities and, and, and other municipalities. Uh, first of all, us in the Nordic countries, uh, both individually and, and jointly, we are and have been among the global leaders in, 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 in climate change for many years now and are very proud to, 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 to be that. That is, is, is both uh, domestically but, but also in our uh, policies and, 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 and uh, foreign uh, politics. Uh, we've done this with, with strict emission targets, um, decarbonization incentives and various other initiatives. Historically, We've mostly focused on our energy emissions, but uh, luckily through the last few years, uh, material production has gotten an increased focus. And, and of course, we, we try to our best to focus on the big polluters, on the main, main sectors, at least to, to start with. Uh, some of our other uh, projects and, and initiatives have included industrial symbiosis, Water Smart CE, green construction, and of course, as has been echoed uh, throughout this webinar, public procurement and green public pro procurement, uh, both both on uh, on the city and municipal level, but also nationally through tenders. Um, one point I would like to highlight here is carbon neutrality. This has and and will continue to play a major role moving forward, both for each country but also uh, through the Nordic Council and the Nordic Council of, of Ministers, which is our, uh, you could say, e e the EU of the Nordics, uh, as this uh, between 2020 and 2030 is one of um, the Nordic Council's uh, three main goals. Um, most of our product regulation is European, whereas our waste regulation is, is largely national, in some cases uh, regional or, or municipal. municipal. Um, we have our national net uh, zero emission targets uh, and, and uh, plus the carbon and fossil free goals. Uh, these are all set between 2040 and 2050. This is, of course, a little tricky how you define things, um, but we, um, in, in all cases, we uh, are exceeding the, the Paris Agreement. Um, lastly, there is a growing interest uh, from both public and private sector over the last few years. Very positive to see this clearly visible shift in, in both the understanding and actions, especially during the last couple of, of years. And this applies to both the, the, the public and, and the business sides. And, and, and also the commitment is, is an important point here to green financing. This has in, increased heavily the risk willingness and, and the knowledge uh, and, and, and of, of the importance of, of uh, both funding uh, projects and investing in companies and, and, and projects. Next slide, please. So uh, a few of the initiatives uh, nationally, uh, just to mention here, Finland has been and continues to be a front runner, not only in the Nordics, but also globally. This has primarily been driven by CITRA, the Finnish Innovation Fund. Uh, among other things, it has resulted in the well-established World Circular Economy Forum. We were uh, an official partner last year in Helsinki and uh, we will be uh, an official partner as well in the fourth forum 
uh, which is uh, to be held in Toronto in September together with the Canadian government. Uh, you can see here some of the uh, important milestones from, from Finland. In 2014, they identified some, some key opportunities um, for Finland. In 2016, they were the world, they uh, published the world's first uh, national CE roadmap. In 2018, uh, the government came out with some economic instruments. And last year, Finland uh, published the second version of their roadmap already. Quite impressive. The second country to release their strategy was Denmark in 2018. And, and later that year, they uh, launched the financing of 11 special initiatives focusing on businesses and society. The Danish Business Authority uh, has done a number of analyses on, on resource efficiency. And the Ellen MacArthur Foundation released a study in 2015 as well on, on the Danish potential. Next slide, please. Now for the other rest, uh, three uh, resting of, 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 of the five, uh, Sweden will uh, launch their strategy in September, but they already previously have uh, a number of, of key strategies on sustainability, consumption, cities, and, and on other areas. Uh, it is the only country to have a specific delegation for circular economy. Uh, this was started about two years ago, and it's a public-private advisory board for the government, focusing on three main areas, as you can see there. Again, public procurement coming up. Uh, and interesting to mention that the Vinova, the Swedish innovation agency, is currently financing over 100 circular transition projects. In Norway, uh, they are also working on their strategy, and this is planned uh, for release in, in December but uh, they already have in place a cross-sector strategy for biogas since 2014 and a roadmap by the waste and recycling industry in, in 2016, focusing on waste as a resource, uh, which, which Falcon mentioned earlier. Klimakur 2020 was an investigation that has uh, uh, provided 160 defined public measures for some of the main Norwegian sectors. And uh, last but not least, the Circularity Gap Report is, is on its way, led by Circular Norway, together with uh, 12 other public and private actors based on, on the work by Circular Economy in, in the Netherlands. And finally, Iceland is, uh, currently has no national strategy for Circular Economy, but for several decades, it has leading strategies uh, worldwide on green energy, especially hydro and geothermal. Uh, an interesting project, uh, the carbon capture, uh, turning CO2 into rock, and a national program for the prevention of waste, which is uh, being implemented. Uh, next slide, please. Just quickly here, the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, is our mother organization in Copenhagen. They have a, a high number of freely available reports and analyses on their website, norden.org. Uh, and, and these have resulted in a number of impactful projects uh, throughout the years. And again, uh, public procurement coming up. Uh, we have a Nordic Public Working Group for the Circular Economy, the NCE, also has a number of focus sectors. And among the ones that they are working on are Nordic indicators for CE. And this is interesting for our second webinar today. And finally, us at Nordic Innovation, we have a program called Nordic Sustainable Business Transformation, uh, divided into four modules, where cities is one. And uh, in this program, we focus heavily on circular business models. And the last slide, please. Now, this is, was just a very, very quick overview of the Nordics. There's a lot more. So feel free to go into our, our website, uh, our Twitter feed, LinkedIn, or to contact me directly through one of these options here below. Thank you. Good, thank you very much, Elise. Uh, thank you both, uh, Hakon and Elise, for uh, sharing, sharing your Nordic uh, countries' views. Um, I see it's 
now time, but I've been told we can uh, probably expand a few minutes uh, just to take a few questions and, and wrap up. So if you can bear with us an extra 10 minutes maximum and we will uh, uh, bring the meeting to an end. Um, many questions online, uh, but I'll pick one or two. Uh, Hakan, going back to you, I think there is a question on the role you see for technology um, to play uh, in enabling the zero emission mandate of the city of Oslo. If you have any circular tech initiatives uh, defined at the macro strategy level. Um, and someone is asking whether the city of Oslo is doing some decentralized development cooperation projects related to the circular economy, in particular with African cities. This seems to be of interest. So I'll give those two to you, Hakon, if you can respond very briefly and then I have one for Elise and we will uh, conclude the meeting. Okay, um, for technology, yes, uh, of course it is uh, uh, very important for, for the city of Oslo also to use the new technology like we are doing now in webinars. Um, as an example, uh, we would like to introduce uh, pay as you throw as, an, uh, as a part of our waste management, which is also based on the, the identification of each citizens throwing their waste into the bin, which will um, then again also start up how, how we can link products as waste to the products as produ when they are produced and designed. So I think that if, if we, we know that we need to, to change the design of products, the way that we are consuming products, and also the way that we are discarding products and technology will help us all the way and also for cities it's very important to, in, to improve their way to identify what's actually throwing away. So that's only one way that we are looking now into the more traditional waste management and pay as you throw and link that to the, the future design of pro and, and production and consumption of products. So that's one, one way of using technology that we have identified already. For um, for the transfer of, of knowledge and, 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 and ideas uh, to other countries, uh, I, I must say that this is, this is identified that we should do it, but it it's, uh, has been a little bit uh, problematic of the resources that we are focusing very much on self not to develop our strategy or our work to do, but that should be uh, one of the responsibilities as cities in Europe that we should transfer. And I, I guess uh, the city of Amsterdam also will, will, uh, will follow us in, in, in that, that we should also make our knowledge and our experience not, not only um, available for European cities, but also open up to other cities outside Europe. Um, but I'm, 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 we have not been, not been doing anything on that so far, but that, that this should be done, be, be done. Yes, thank you. Good, thank you very much, Hakan. And now I move to Elise. Uh, two questions. One is a bit provocative. Uh, each time we talk about uh, policy, public policy and environmental policy, in particular, uh, the Nordic uh, uh, region is uh, uh, very advanced and mature. Uh, what can you really learn from other countries that are uh, starting the first steps towards the circular economy? So if you can uh, uh, elaborate a bit on that, you know, what, what do Nordic countries take from other countries that are maybe at a more early stage and, and, and what guidance uh, they can uh, provide uh, to uh, these uh, countries in particular? And then uh, I'm looking at whether there is another question. No, that would be it. That would be it. So, how do you see the the relative, uh, the relatively advanced stage of the Nordic countries, and uh, what can they learn from uh, others that are uh, uh, incipient in in setting circular economy strategies? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think first of all, we need to be humble. Uh, we are um, uh, good in, in, in many ways, but we can always learn from, from others and are very happy to share the things that we are doing. Uh, in terms of circular economy, we have, of course, been, been looking to the Netherlands. We have looked towards Japan uh, and, and, um, and other actors on, on, on the global stage and tried to kind of learn from, from, from their experiences uh, and, and, and try maybe not to repeat some of the things that haven't worked out as, as well. 
Uh, we are also trying through the Nordic cooperation to kind of help each other uh, because uh, Finland has been this 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 um, this locomotive uh, followed like I said followed by Denmark and Sweden. Um, uh, we 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 are we are all learning as we go along. We have uh, short uh, decision processes in 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 in, in our countries, com at least compared to. Mm -hmm. Some, some some others this is very helpful uh, and and we are very quick to adapt and and, and willing to do our, our best and, and cooperate and uh, in, in in our way in, in, in our way of, of working through through uh, cooperation and partnerships in in the Nordics uh, we have managed to to come this far in in a relatively short time and that will, will hopefully continue so I think the key message here is is working together, learning from e from each other, and and uh, continuing with with the things that have worked um, the best, and and be unafraid to to let go of of uh, measures that that um, maybe aren't aren't working as well. Thank you very much, Elise, and that uh, brings the meeting to an end. I uh, really want to thank you all uh, uh, for your patience and uh, for uh, testing with us the robustness of our technology. I want to thank the IT team uh, at the OECD. You've been fantastic, including to manage some of the disruptions. Thank you very much for your effectiveness and my uh, dream team at the OECD. I will give the final word to Oriana, Oriana Romano, who is heading our work on circular economy and is really uh, the mastermind behind this work uh, and the architect of, uh, of this program. Oriana, you have the, the final uh, words, please. Thank you very much, Aziza. Is uh, really we're running late, but I just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, very much the team, uh, all the cities that have already uh, been part of this program, and uh, in particular today, Valladolid, Groningen, and Umea. Uh, the report uh, are available. The reports are available online, and we look very much forward to working with uh, Glasgow, Ireland working with Granada and all the other cities that would be uh, interested in joining this program. Um, let me thank, of course, the IT team for managing uh, uh, this webinar today, you for your moderation, Luis and Ander, uh, part of my team that have been working very hard to make this happen. And the very, very last word is to invite everybody uh, to join the next uh, webinar. Uh, in less than one hour, we have a webinar at 2 p.m. on what's, what's next on the circular economy. We will share some results from the OECD survey on the circular economy in cities and regions. We will discuss how to monitor circularity in uh, uh, cities together with European Commission, Ellen MacArthur Foundations, uh, uh, and many other circular economy experts. We look forward to the next uh, webinar and thank you very much for participating in this one. Bye. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye and see you for the next uh, webinar.